welcome to the Indicade Climate Jam 2021 Awards Show. I'm Megan from Eco-Friendly-ish. I am the MC of this virtual awards presentation this afternoon, evening, morning, depending on your time zone. Happy to have you here. We have a really excellent show put together for you all today. We're going to have several of our award-winning teams chat about the games that they created for this climate game jam. But first, we have an overview video, so please enjoy. This year, Games for Our Future and Indicade came together to produce our second virtual climate jam. This jam brought together over 215 jammers to produce 29 different games. We believe this generation of creators cares deeply about the environment and has the power to inspire action through games. The theme of this jam was clean energy solutions. A huge thank you to our great team of mentors who are here to support our jammers. and a huge thank you to our sponsors for supporting this jam. All right, thank you to the mentors, thank you to the sponsors, thank you to everyone who has brought this together with Indicate and Games for Our Future. The Climate Jam, if you are unaware of the event that took place, it happened from April 22nd to May, second and today is our big awards show where we get to introduce the winners so what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be hopping into discord and here we go all right so i'm in a discord server with some of our winners first up we have an honorable mention award drum roll i don't i don't have the drums to do a formal drum roll sorry guys but our first up is summer in surya annabelle can you unmute you there hello hello <laughs> yeah i'm here can you hear me yeah, I can hear you. I hope everyone in the Twitch stream can hear you as well. Welcome. Congrats. Well, welcome. Congrats. If you'll mute on your end, it sounds like we're getting an echo. All right. So let me load up Summer in Syria. Can you introduce yourself? Tell, tell us about you and your team. So... Uh, summer in Surya. Shoot, hold on. Um, <laughs> I'll go ahead and load the game. It's summer in Surya is uh, supposed to be like a, an interactive narrative about clean energy. Um, the prototype that we submitted for the game jam um isn't as complete as uh all of the design decisions that we were um putting into the game um which we were uh able to showcase a little bit more of in our uh game video um but uh really appreciate you taking the time to check out our game yeah, I, so full disclosure, I had a hard time getting this running on my computer, but let's, so this is what I was able to view. Is this what I was supposed to be able to view? Yeah. 
So that is um, what we have for our game that's um, built in terms of programming. Okay. Uh, there is more like that you would be able to see um, from checking out our game video. Um, just because a lot of the narrative work that we put into it, like we um, weren't able to uh, complete within our uh, game build. Um, gotcha. No, that happens. I mean, that's the point of a game jam is so you can learn and work with a new team and experiment. So tell us a little bit more about the narrative that you were hoping to accomplish here with your team. Yeah, so um, Summer in Surya is uh, um, is supposed to be like uh, set in the not so distant future um, where the city is experiencing a series of outages from an overloaded power grid. Um, and Ginny, the electrical engineer, must travel uh, across the city and install clean energy solutions to restore power to the metropolis. So players choose which route to take that leaves the smallest carbon footprint while getting Ginny to work on time. Gotcha. That's awesome. Yeah, I was messing around. And so we can start seeing some of the gameplay elements here. Just fantastic. Can you tell me what what's something that you learned about clean energy from this game jam? So I learned um, about uh, two of the top three fossil fuel emitters by sector are electricity and transportation. And that's kind of what we tried to tackle within our game. Um, so um, through the narrative, um, we wanted to bring attention to how um, there are personal choices that we can make um, to make a difference in our environmental footprints, um, but there's also a need and opportunity for a larger systemic change in, um, across our industries. Um, so our goal is to create an inspire, or interesting semi-futuristic eco-city that's um, similar enough to present day to be relatable. Um, and uh, we also have... Um, uh, an original soundtrack that um, was composed for our game. I love it. It's really boppy and I'm really having a hard time sitting still. <laughs> like, it's great. <laughs> What's next for you and your team? Like what will you keep with this game? Will you work on something else or tell me more? Um, hopefully it's a combination. Um, we actually have uh, Jake, our music composer here. Um, I'm not sure if um, he wants to say a couple words about it um, and how, how we try to, uh, you know, capture the duality of both like electricity and nature um, from emerging eco cities. Um, yeah, hop on. our music. Can you speak up? Uh, hold on. Here we go. The kind of background intros and outros and stuff to kind of capture like a natural kind of almost tribal rhythmic sort of feel. And uh, combining that with all the synthesizers and stuff um, made it sound pretty good, I think. And the, the upbeat energy kind of helps you keep that vibe going throughout the game. So uh, yeah, that was kind of the thought process behind it. That's awesome. Can you repeat a little bit at the beginning? Uh, the sound was competing with Discord. So tell us a little bit from the start. Sorry. Are you still there? <laughs> I think we lost him. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. That was a snag on my end. Uh, for anyone who's going to... Sorry, managing the two sounds is a little bit of a challenge. <laughs> you got it. You got it. And I'm sorry, you're our first, you're our first person, so we get to... <laughs> we're, we're all learning together. So thank you for everyone for your patience while we do this. So for anyone curious, we have like all of our award winners in a Discord together, and I'm, they're just going to be unmuting as it's their turn to talk. So... We'll keep going as we like we'll keep learning as we go anything else that you all want to add i 
I think um, for a lot of us on the team, uh, including myself, this was our first game jam, and um, and it was just kind of a challenge to balance our like personal like um, visions and ambitions for the game um, and translating like really in-depth climate research with what's like realistically feasible with our respective experiences. Um, but I think ultimately um, we gained valuable game development experience thanks to the wonderful Game Jam mentors and organizers who made it possible to bring uh, Summer in Surya to life. Um, I do hope uh, to uh, continue to build out the um, game a little bit more um, so it's uh, more um, playable for people. Um, in the future and I hope our narrative project can educate people about clean energy solutions and inspire action to make our world a better place. Well, that was beautifully said and well thank you again and congrats to the team for an honorable mention for summer in Surya. All righty I'm gonna have to like switch to task manager to get out of this one second. All right Next up, our next honorable mention is, drumroll, 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 Populous. Could the Populous devs please un, or the primary dev, please unmute yourself while I get it loaded. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you very well. All righty. Let's so load this. Um, yeah. Wait, sorry. I don't think I can hear you properly. Can you hear me through Discord? Um, I don't think so, no. Oh, is that what our problem? Hold on. Can you hear me better now? Oh, yeah. I can hear you okay. now. <gasps> oh, OK. I'm sorry, Annabelle and everybody. Like, my, pro my computer has been, ugh, OK. We should be good to go now. Let us run Populous. Yep. All right. Tell us more about Populous, please. OK, so Populous is a story-based game regarding conversations and narratives around climate change and clean energy. Um, we were inspired to create the game after thinking deeply about why we simply can't get real change, um, especially through politics and governments and established institutions that technically should be able to deliver change to us. Um, because we know that climate change is a huge issue and we have the tech to solve climate change. We have um, sources of clean energy that are cheaper than conventional energy sources. And so the question to us was, why can't we get positive change? And that's what Populous is all about. Um, we talk about corporate infiltration into politics and you play as an activist who tries to swing public opinion uh, to favor clean energy and you learn about common tactics and strategies that fossil fuel interests use to spread misinformation. And you also try to, through playing the game, learn the best ways to counter those efforts at misinformation. You also work to get a new politician elected as mayor of your city and you prepare speeches for them you go around the city for them and campaign for them and whether or not they get elected at the end is based on the choices that you make throughout the game so, yeah. that's incredible so like what's our, i mean it sounds like you have a lot of takeaways from this game jam i mean that you have a lot of different sources of inspiration yeah yep um yeah, I think in terms of our main takeaways from the jam, um, we like really learned a lot about the specific methods that companies use to like create misinformation. And like throughout the game, uh, we tell the, the player as well around like different things that uh, in different ad campaigns and the different narratives that corporations and politicians who support them try to push to prevent any sort of change. And so, yeah, we talk about like jobs and we talk about things like, oh, it's going to be so expensive. And so those are also questions that are like intuitive and you want to believe them at first. And it's like really counterintuitive to think about responses to those. 
and so yeah i think like by creating this game we also over time like learned about better and better responses about like how to answer those questions that's incredible so what oh, do yeah, you also like go ahead go ahead yeah also i i'm totally i totally forgot to introduce myself yeah please <laughs> um yeah so so my name is purav and i'm 16 years old i'm from india and yeah we made this game our studio name is kalinga studio and we've made a few games here and there and our team consists of darren who is a high school student in the us who made excellent art and we have snowman who did amazing programming i think snowman is also on the discord call so maybe you could unmute yourself and introduce uh yeah sure um so i'm 17 year old year old and i'm from estonia and um uh, this pro- this uh, like team work uh, was amazing and this uh, especially the like the gre- green er- energy team and stuff like uh, made uh, us research a lot and we, yeah i learned i learned like a lot about the stuff especially like that uh, uh, us as the citizens uh, like um, the people can like uh, affect the uh, like changes like we could uh, make like big movements and stuff and for st- uh, the whole world to use like um, green energy that's incredible like the chat's just everyone's so excited you guys are really young and inspiring so thank you so much for everything that you've done we're really excited about populous and congrats anything else you all want to add yeah so we're all from different parts of the world and you know we're all from different time zones and we all speak different languages um but yeah we think that this game jam was an incredible experience for all of us because number one it introduced us to each other and like it's really hard to find people who have such an amazing passion for creating games and like a community of people who also care so much about the climate and are also like so passionate about creating games so yeah we think that like this was an absolutely incredible experience for all of us quick question how can people follow you after the jam um so you could always go to our website which is www.kalinga.studio and we put links to our latest games up there and yeah we also have links to our socials and stuff up there so and we're also on the discord server on the climate game jam fam channel awesome. so yeah so cool all right thank you all again very much congratulations on your honorable mention all right we're gonna shift gears really quick and we have something a little bit different for this next one so now we're going to the nantic positive impact award and we're gonna bring up a video and i'm gonna mute myself external publishing for Niantic, and I speak for all Niantics in saying how honored we are to be participating as sponsors again for the Indicade Climate Jam. Thank you to all of you who participated this year and to Indicade for demonstrating how games can help us imagine a more perfect future and bring us closer to realizing it. This year's Positive Impact Award goes to Planet. And there you have it, Niantic chose planet for the positive impact award congratulations you guys there thank you yeah (laughs) yeah thanks yeah all right so tell us about planet please uh so planet is a game where players are tasked with building support for climate action uh, on a little tiny planet that they're given. Um, you have to strategically find a way to uh, uh, grow support uh, on a planet that is full of people that uh, kind of really don't want support. 
Um, you, uh, you learn as you build and change structures um, from good, from bad structures to good structures, how they impact not only the world, but how they also impact support for the people around it. Um, yeah. That's incredible. Would you like for me to play the game or do one of the gameplay videos? If you can play the game, that'd be great. Yeah. Let me load it up. All right. So tell it like, oh, let's see. Is this going to be a little too loud? It might be, but there's sound options if you want to. Yeah. <laughs> nice. All right. So tell us what we're looking at here. So if you start the game, uh, you get a randomly generated planet. Um, at the bottom left where you are on the, on the stream, you can switch between the support uh, view and the, the actual health view. The support view will show you uh, what tiles have good support or bad support. Yeah. So you click on the, if you click on the red button right below there, you'll see the, the um, Yeah. So the the green hexes all have good support, and the the and they all affect the other red uh, tiles, which have uh, negative support for climate action and climate change. And so you have to take certain different actions and kind of strategically uh, build support, and then create uh, change in these buildings. And if you hover over a building like you are, you can not only see the information about the building uh, in plain English how it affects the carbon emissions. And then if you get enough support around that building, you can upgrade it as well. Gotcha. So what, and so, go ahead. Do you mean to upgrade no, a building? No, I, 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 I don't have enough yeah, support. Yeah, if you want. <laughs> I don't have enough support here. So, so uh, if you go straight down in the middle, yeah, that one, uh, click, on, click on the red uh, tiles next to it any of the red tiles next to a building. Ah, okay. And then on the right, you can uh, build, uh, pay for support as like a, as an option as well. Got it. And we have our money. And All right. Repeat. And then you click on, then you can click on the building in the middle and upgrade it. Yay. We have solar panels, guys. What's something that you learned about clean energy in the process of making this game? So I, I want to shout out to our amazing team. We've had we had so many people help out with the game. Uh, we even had a quote unquote environmental advisor. Um, uh, and as as the writer of the game, I did a lot of research in terms of uh, climate policies, all that stuff. And I think the thing we all really took away was how much everything around climate is interconnected and how support itself is set for climate and climate change is such a big push in how we can uh, make a difference. That's awesome. That's really awesome to hear. What's next for you all with Planet? So we have a website. I'll, I'll post it in the Twitch chat. Um, but yeah, we're, we're, we're super excited to keep working on the game and hopefully release it on Steam. That's great. And so... Have you all worked together before? I don't remember if you said no, that. We oh. have not. So we're, we're, we're from all over the U.S. and Indonesia, actually. Uh, so we're, we are a bunch of people that really met for the first time. We all joined through the Looking for a Group ch uh, channel. Um, and yeah, I, I again want to give super big props to our sound guy who did a lot of uh, uh, community gathering and a lot of really great work. Um, and yeah, do you have anything you want to say, Mike, about about your amazing programming skills? Actually, yeah, I just released an article today on my website. It's mikereps.com. It's my username. I'll post that in the uh, in the chat as well. Uh, and it just discusses some of the challenges that I ran into when programming this and some of the solutions I came up with. So uh, if anybody's interested in taking a look, this was made in Unity. We use scriptable objects which was key uh, to being able to get the art in there um, quickly uh, while working with a team. So uh, I have an article outlining some of that stuff. If anybody's interested, uh, I'll post a link to that. Absolutely. And, you can, and if you 
If you switch back to the, the green button uh, on the left, you can actually see the visualness of how, how you're changing the planet's uh, health as you slowly build support for it. This is incredible. This is really, really great. I'm so excited about all of these games today. Thank you guys very, very much. Anything else you want to add? Thank you. No, we're, we're so excited that, and to be able to do this. We're so grateful for this awesome climate jam. We, we, we all think it's such a wonderful purpose. And I, I just so excited that our team all s didn't sleep and put all this together. <laughs> Sleep. Uh, it's, it's overrated, I guess. <laughs> awesome. Well, congratulations on your Niantic Positive Impact Award. It was wonderful to get to chat with you. All right. Let me get things lined up for our next winner. Next up, we have. Drum roll, drum roll, drum roll, drum roll, drum roll. Arcology Dreams as an Honorable Mention Award winner. Arcology, are you there? Hello, hello. Hello. Is this Patrick? Yes, yes. Great. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm feeling very sheepish. Sorry again, everyone, about all these technical issues, but thank you again for your patience. How are you? I'm all right. Um, just excited to be here. Yeah. So let me bring up Arcology. All right. Tell us about Arcology, please. So Arcology Dreams is um, it's a uh, a game about um, a city. It's a city building game where you construct an entire city within a single building, and this is kind of based off of the idea of a um an archi architectural concept where instead of having this great big urban sprawl you have a single building that is kind of um uh put away from nature so the uh impact on the environment is lessened well this sounds beautiful Oh, yeah. All of that is because of our uh, composer, Carla D, um, in Sydney, Australia. She uh, did all of the music for the game and uh, did a great job. All right. So no urban sprout. What, what all inspired you for this? So Arcology is like, they've been this concept in a lot of sci-fi and a lot of books and a lot of... Um, architectural ideas um and they've never really come to exist in the real world so they're still just uh, a dream essentially so um the uh i wanted to see what that would look like in a game and i felt like uh, a city builder with the scale of a single building would be something that would be achievable in uh, a jam all right so tell me more well, what I'm actually doing here. <laughs> here, there so, we go. Um, all right, cool. So for the arcology, I mean, you've got uh, commercial buildings, you've got housing buildings, you've got power generation. Um, so if you wanted to start, there's a tab that has housing on it. If you want to check at the bottom. Okay. And uh, yeah, you can put down um, housing. Uh, the housing costs money and uses a little bit of resources as well. All the buildings do to a certain extent. Um, you want to have uh, position um, uh, parks next to buildings um, to improve their wellness. Uh, you want to also put down commercial buildings to generate money. Um, and uh, also vertical farms, which is another architectural concept that I think that we'll see very soon, mm -hmm. where you're able to produce um, farms in urban environments. What was your big takeaway after learning for this game jam? Well, so it never actually got into the game, but while I was working on it, I was researching uh, sustainable um, uh, building materials. 
uh, and what that would look like in the future because actually one of the biggest contributors to uh, climate change is the production of concrete, which is the single most used substance um, mankind has ever used. Um, and we use so much carbon to create it. Um, so as I continue on with this game, because I do plan to continue on with it and uh, develop it further, um, I want to implement that of creating these buildings in, in these arcologies without using concrete, which I'm not sure what that will look like, but... Well, I worked I with that's, a, that's the way to go. I worked with a company called Biomason that grows bricks. There are definitely lots of really amazing innovations going on out there. Ah, is that is that the um the, the what is it called like the myco bricks? There's uh, a few, uh, yeah. That they're they, yeah. There's some of them are using mycology and using fungus somewhere. Like they, it's it's a crazy like the innovation is fantastic. Yeah, so. all sorts of really neat, interesting stuff, and also using hemp uh, for concrete um, instead of uh, you know the sand and stone. And, um, so you know, there's all sorts of interesting uh, directions that go with this. Um, that unfortunately couldn't get into the game, um, but of course it is a game jam. Yeah, was this your first time doing a game jam? No, I've done I've done one once before, um, but uh, not not really to this degree and level of loss um, <laughs> I'm sorry I shouldn't no laugh. no it was no it was worth it <laughs> have you been able to make up on your sleep everyone <laughs> uh, let's see uh, what if someone wants to follow this or follow your development how can they find you um well I uh, can check out my um, uh, itch.io um, account. I've got a couple of my games there. Um, and uh, I've also got a game out on the um, Android app store, um, Google Play, rather, uh, Neon Run. Um, I'll put that into the, uh, in, into the, the messages. Yeah, please do. Absolutely. Well, this is incredible. Is there anything else you would like to add? No, I just wanted to sh give a shout out again to uh, Carla D. Um, hopefully she's watching this. Um, she did a great job and I want to encourage anybody who's interested in um, working with a really talented composer for any of their work that they're working on is to seek her out. She's awesome. I'll, um, I'll put in a link to her uh, SoundCloud as well, just if anybody's interested. Please do. Absolutely. Put it in Twitch chat or put it in Discord. I mean, we're all really happy to hear what everyone's going to do with these things as they move forward. So this is great. All right. Are you ready to switch? To, are you, anything else? You good? No, I'm, I'm all right. Let's, let's go on to the next one. Congrats on your honorable award. Thank you again. All right. Let's, Thank you very much. Yeah. Let's check out who's next. Next up, our next honorable mention is drum roll, 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 do something for Earth Care. Todd, are you there? I am. Hey, how's it going? It's going really well, Todd. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Now this is one I cannot really play this because this is Android, correct? This is an Android, yeah, an Android app. But we can definitely chat through the experience. Please tell us the experience. Totally, yeah. So this is an experience where it's an AR, augmented reality experience, where you collect per energy. So you it's sort of different energy types are uh, solar. So if you look up at the sun and point your, your device at the sun, you collect solar energy. And if you blow into the microphone, you get wind power. And if you swing your arms very vigorously, you get uh, mechanical power that way. And the idea is that you play this game over days. So it's kind of a long game. And uh, the more you uh, gain energy, you can build things with that energy um, and you increase your capacity to, to do things. So 
this, what you're seeing on screen here is, is sort of the building blocks. And, and so if you collect solar energy, you get the solar panel blocks. And if you get um, mechanical and wind, those are kind of windmill uh, kind of devices that you can attach. And then once you're happy with them, then you can then go put it in augmented reality and, uh, and check it out. But as you play the game more and more, you get more and more um, building blocks. And so my hope with the game was to encourage people to kind of think, think about owning their energy, um, right? So it's like sometimes we, we just, you know, kind of accept that we're just going to pull energy from a particular area. And this, this sort of encourages people to think, think through like, are, are, can we, can we use our own energy? It's more kind of speculative, right? How, how can we use our own personal energy? And then coming from sort of the mentors was like, what, what do we do with this? Right? So what, what is the collective action? Um, so one of the things that players can do is every day check in on this website and that gives them more energy to build with. So every day you go back to the website, you get more energy. And um, yeah, my hope, my hope with the game was to encourage, especially on socials, like people would then play the game, share their creations, and then also try to get involved with climate action in some way. Um, yeah, so that's kind of kind of the premise of, of it. That's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> I am struck it's by lot. all of these games with the very ambitious goals that are incredible. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so did you actually like, so I mean, to totally ask what fun. inspired you, like there's a, there's a lot going on here. Yeah, totally. Um, a lot of different inspirations. Um, I mentioned the mentors, for example, at the beginning, um, especially the, I think it was Anya talking about, you know, putting solar panels on the top of every roof. Um, that was that that came, and then everybody was talking about collective action. So that was one point of inspiration. The other was talking about. Um, so I, I didn't mention this, but I my teammates are myself and my dad, and my dad is a climate activist, and um, we had very lengthy discussions about, you know, what types of energy should we kind of talk about. And you know, geothermal came up, um, nuclear uh, things that you know are a little bit politically charged, um, but I think is interesting to keep our minds open to these other other technologies. Um, so, so definitely, my dad was an inspiration. Um, what else? Oh, so the name "Do Something for Earth Care." There, if you look back. At 1957, there was Charles and Ray Ames, um, you know, known for amazing sort of design work. They created one of the first uh, ways of showing off photovoltaic um, in action, and they created this thing called the Do Nothing Machine. You should Google Google that at some point. Um, and it's basically using solar power to make this kind of kaleidoscope. Um, windmill kind of thing, uh, partly toy, partly diorama, uh, is really cool. And um, so that, that definitely was a huge inspiration. So instead of do nothing, it's a do something, right? It's a play on words there. I love it. Um, yeah. Well, it sounds like if your dad's already a climate activist, I mean, what were some of the things that you took away from this game jam in terms of clean energy or game development? Well, the, I thought it was really fun to be able to, you know, think about solar energy and, and, and particularly with solar in augmented reality. Um, I don't know if anybody got to try it out, but that interaction with holding your up your phone up to, to gather solar power, that, that felt really like, you know, almost a Zelda moment where it's like, da da da, you know, I got I got this energy. Um, so I feel like there's a lot of interesting things to explore there. Uh, and I want to keep exploring. Um, the other, I found myself the uh, very lazy. Basically, the mechanical movement and the the wind power. Um, it was just interesting that I, I felt like I didn't want to do that every day. <laughs> so uh, that was interesting learnings. And then, like I mentioned before, the um, the alternative met, like energies that we don't necessarily 
think about like geothermal and uh, nuclear, I thought was interesting to kind of think about, um, you know, I think we were potentially the first part of the game, we were going to go a geothermal type game. I'm glad we switched, but it was interesting to research that area and kind of open my mind up into the other possibilities that are open. That's really cool. So, so how can people follow more about this game? And what's next yeah, for you? Yeah, so if you, for sure. So uh, if you follow me on Twitter at Tiki, Tiki Little, um, that's the best source. Uh, I Just a small plug, but I work at a company called Fair Worlds, and uh, we do augmented reality and uh, virtual reality for clients. So we, we work with, with um, companies, NGOs, like uh, Environmental Defense Fund, you know, creating experiences like uh, the Monarch Effect, you know, talking about Monarch butterflies, and and also um, Methane Challenge was was about um, climate change. So check out fairworlds.com as well. Can you put that in chat? Yes. Thank you. Do that. So you already have a little bit of experience with AR. Was this your first game jam? Uh, no, this is actually my third in like climate jam. Um, wow. So yeah, definitely, definitely been around for a bit. That's pretty cool. All right. Anything that you want to add on behalf of you and your dad? No, just thanks. Thanks so much for, for this award. Um, and congratulations to everybody that, that's won. This has been a great game jam. Awesome. I hope ever, I still hope everyone's recovered and gotten more sleep. <laughs> <laughs> all righty let's switch it out let's get our next one our next award that we're presenting this one is for our most adventurous award and so drum roll drum roll drum roll drum roll this winner is low tech orama i love saying that charlotte are you there yeah. Hi. Charlotte, are you oh. I have to... Hold on. We have to mute uh, the yeah. nervous stuff. Okay. Do you hear me fine? Yes. Yes. Hi. Congratulations. Thank hey. you. I was so happy. Yeah. <laughs> tell us, please. Tell us about Low Tech O Rama. Okay, so Low Tech Arama is a game uh, about low tech, so about using old tech to create new stuff. And it runs on a Commodore 64, so uh, there is some amazing people have made a Commodore 64 emulator for uh, in JavaScript. So we have made our game actually using a 1986 uh, software for game creation, and it runs uh, on this. Oh, um, the page that you're on, it's just uh, something to to signal you that you're going to have to wait around one minute for the game to load. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's classic. As a great C64 yeah. emulator, it does emulate um, well the loading time, so it's taking one minute to load the game. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In the meantime, is this, it sounds like you guys, you've already worked together as a team. Well, we have um, two of us. We've made several games together, and we've uh, the the person that made the sound. Uh, of course, you can you can play the sound uh, while uh, while we're talking, maybe. But it's a beautiful soundtrack, and uh, Nathan uh, has made this uh, uh, this beautiful and long uh, song that uh, enables us to really enjoy. It's a narrative experience, so it had to be something uh, long and flowy and nice. It's more a loop, huh? in fact, though. Yeah, it is a loop. <laughs> what inspired you all? As, uh, like, I'm not going to know if the game has started. Will I? Oh, there it goes. OK. What inspired you? Um, well, our big machines, they make, uh, they use so much energy. Uh, our big computers, when we make, uh, when we're in Unity to create games, or even if we use Game Maker and if we use uh, Unreal Engine, it takes up so much energy in our big computers to create these games. So we wanted to try making a computer that was uh, less hurtful for the environment and making it with uh, uh, means that were uh, soft and gentle. So reusing the old tech is really, uh, it's our proposal for a solution uh, for a sustainable IT, for sustainable computing. 
So what do I oh, do now hey. in the game? It says that uh, <laughs> I can't say that I had. Uh, a, I'm excellent. You, you, you just forgot for, forgot to open uh, the documentation too, because ah. uh, it is uh, at the end uh, of the page. Oh, yeah. There is a documentation, uh, but uh, the computer, yeah, it's as it's asking you how you are feeling. You can uh, you can't put uh, any um, uh, an exclamation point because it doesn't understand. You just have to use one word. I don't believe it understands excellence, but you can say good. Good, happy, <laughs> sad. Good. All right, I'm good. <laughs> I am a modified terminal of the People's Union for Computing and Climate to gather their thoughts to make the industry more sustainable. Do I know them? No. Tell me more. <laughs> All right. Well, they're... Oh, so this is in the far future in 2785? Yeah, it is. So did you... And, uh... Go ahead. Oh, I was going to talk about the drawings. We had to draw actually uh, using the, the 1986 um, software. Uh, there was no mouse. There is no mouse on the Commodore 64. So uh, uh, you had to you had to do it using a joystick. And we don't have a joystick on our computer. So we had to use it. Uh, we had to draw using the the, num the number pads. Yeah. <laughs> or the arrows. And I would like to add that everything is made of like lines rectangles and ellipses so that's pretty basic that's like far away from photoshop or something like that so it was quite a challenge but it was it was fun do you i mean this begs the question do you all have commodore 64s actually uh none of us uh, <laughs> have one i have a red edition <laughs> I do have a, a VIC-20, but uh, that's, that's the older model. And it's so. not working. But... And it's not working. <laughs> <laughs> but we... So no, we, ha we have no way to play it on, a, on the original hardware. But not yet. At not least. yet. <laughs> uh, was this your first game jam? No, we have done, uh, I think, four or five, and with Nathan, we have actually met Nathan on a previous game jam, so this is our second game uh, with Nathan. So, we're super happy, and we did games of sleep, like a lot of sleep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We did sleep a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that you all slept. Where are you all located? Uh, we're in France. Uh, Nathan is in Metz, so river uh, in the northeast. And uh, Matteo and I are in the southwest in Biarritz. Well, I, I should spell capitalism right. Nope. Capitalism. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, please tell me uh, what's something that you learned while you were developing this? What did you take away from it? Well, developing a game for the, for the Commodore 64, I had. Um, tried some things about it, but never uh, such a big project and working with three people to make a game on it. So it did really put in perspective that you actually can create something that is interesting uh, for the Commodore 64 that has a great universe. Uh, at least that's what I think we did. Yeah. And so, I don't know, can we make a C64 game go on Steam? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. No, I I don't know, but at least I'd like to I'd like to try some new things, uh, and I think we'd like to try some new things together on older uh, computers. That's... Yes, and uh, we are thinking uh, about um, a physical release of the game. Yeah, too. like on, on a real tape yeah, that, that on can cassettes. play on the six sixty four that we don't have yet. But, well, <laughs> maybe someday. Exactly. <laughs> and cassettes are pretty cheap, so even if you don't have a Commodore 64, hopefully you're just like having it around. <laughs> Man, I grew up with floppy disks. This is super weird. Oh, wait, I need to try yeah. something else. Uh... Oh, where are you in the game? Oh, yeah, you were, you were meddling with the disks. You were in the menu. Oh, this is, I mean, gosh, the amount of detail, like, and you said you made this with lines, it's... Yeah, wow. like every drawing is made of lines and rectangle and ellipses, so, yeah. 
So you're not sure what's next. How can people follow, depending on uh, the chat, someone just, we just need to get you a Commodore, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> but what can, what can people do to follow you? Um, there is our page, uh, method.each.io. And uh, Nathan is Leomar de Vinci, Leomar uh, to Vinci. <laughs> I think he's on Twitter, so maybe he'll post his Twitter handle, and I am too, so uh, I'll post it too. And uh, but we'll definitely try to make some improvements on the game, uh, including making the the manual more relevant to the experience. Uh, I think because th there is a manual with uh, all the all the nouns that are understandable by the computer, so that is a help uh, if you're stuck. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I think we'll try to 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 make yeah, the experience uh, a little bit more enjoyable. What's your favorite part of it so far, or from this game that you've created? Um, I don't know. Probably like the our whole narrative. But I'm so very proud that we did uh, submit some something for a jam in 2021 that was done on a Commodore 64. <laughs> <laughs> That really still, is crazy. Yeah. Go ahead. And it's still playable online, so... Yeah. That's pretty... <laughs> I had well, no idea what to expect. Minutes, but... Is there but, anything yeah. else you guys want to share? Go ahead. Oh, uh, yeah. Please wait the whole minute it takes to, to start. <laughs> I, I promise it, it may be worth it, if yeah. you like it, but... You have to be patient. Uh, around 45 seconds to 1 minute and 30 seconds it would take to load. <laughs> I have dogs barking in the background. I'm so sorry if you all can hear that. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, okay. Uh, don't worry. This was, this is incredible. Like, I can't, I, I keep using the word incredible. I'm sorry, guys, but this is astonishing and amazing and phenomenal what everyone has done in the very innovative ways that everyone has approached this climate jam. So congratulations on getting the most adventurous award. Thank you. Uh, thank you so thank much. You. Congrats to everyone. But we're so happy. Thank this you. Is wonderful. All right, let's check out our next honorable mention. Let's close out of here. Our next one up for honorable mention is drum roll, drum roll, drum roll, drum roll. We have Turbine Tapper. Sierra, are you there? Maybe? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah! Congratulations! Thank you. <laughs> we definitely weren't expecting this as a team. <laughs> that, okay, so tell us. Tell us about Turbine Tapper. Tell us everything. Hold on. One second, let me mute uh, Twitch real fast. Okay, that, yeah, it gets um, confusing. I'm <laughs> sorry. Oh, no worries, no worries. Um, so, uh, Turbine Tapper is just a simple idle clicker game. Um, we were actually part of this project um, as part of our school curriculum. We are all students at the University of Washington Bothell. And um, this is actually our first climate jam and our first experience making a game. Wow, this is super cute. And now I'm just compulsively clicking on a stream. I'm sure this is really <laughs> sorry, guys, but I have to I got to level up. <laughs> so tell us more about like, have you are you all students at the same school? Yeah, we're all students in the um, interactive media design program. Um, typically, we're more focused on UI UX, but for this particular course, um, we're taking a game design class, and we thought that making a game like this would be um, an excellent way to dip our toes into the water, so to speak. Um, most of us aren't really game designers by nature, so it was a really interesting experience for us to um, make a game and make it in such a short time frame so we wanted to keep the scope a little bit easier uh, for the sake of you know getting everything submitted in time <laughs> <laughs> i mean i'm really rolling now i'm getting some really good energy what inspired you all to make this game um we just wanted something really uh light-hearted and kind of vibrant and fun um nothing I know that a lot of the games are 
pretty serious and they're really ambitious and I'm really excited to see everything around here. Um, but for us, we, like I said, since we have no um, prior experience, we are kind of looking for something easy to grasp. And although we didn't get to implement everything, I think we, we just had like a nice base theme for our project. I really need to know who on your team is addicted to Cookie Clicker. Um, is it all of you? His name is. <laughs> is it one is person? Kenneth. <laughs> Um, that was a hunch. Who initially, pro who initially proposed the idea. Um, actually, a lot of us had never played clicker games before, okay. and maybe I shouldn't say this, <laughs> but after playtesting it for four or five hours, I've come to hate clicker games. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, although I had, we had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun, but we, we made mouse over macros to click automatically for us at some point. That's <laughs> I thought you got to tell us how you really feel. Uh, <laughs> is there, uh, besides learning your true feelings about clicker games, was there anything that you learned about clean energy or game development that you took away from this game jam? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, for us, it was really an experience to see how all the components of game design come together. Um, we had we had split according into roles for our like class groupings. So it was nice to actually like have a project um, timeline and things like that. But also as we were doing our research um, for this game, we were talking like, it's interesting to see the types of like energy solutions that are available to you and how no matter, not no matter where you are, but there's, there's sources of renewable energy that almost every area can utilize, whether it be in Washington, where you're using wind farms and hydroelectric dams to living in um, Sweden and using um, like biofuel, biomass, and how it can be incorporated into almost every kind of, or like as a supplemental form of energy. I feel like the Swedish influence was from Hugo, yeah. Did you guys interact with Hugo? He's incredible. <laughs> Maybe. I haven't had the chance to, okay. but... <laughs> there were wonderful mentors. Just another shout out really quick. The sponsors and the mentors for the Game Jam put a lot of time into I don't think they lost as much sleep as the participants, but props to everyone who made this Game Jam a reality. I can't stop smiling, Sierra. I can't stop smiling at the sun. Like, it's so happy. And I also really need to know what has influenced this button skin I'm looking at right now. Um, that is actually our um, our professor. <laughs> so we thought it would be a fun little Easter egg to have him be <laughs> our final, <laughs> like our stretch goal, just as a little joke. <laughs> <laughs> that noise freaked me out. <laughs> I oh, hope they would freak him out too. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's his name? His name is Mark Chen. All right. Well, Professor Mark Chen, I'm clicking your face. I hope that's okay. <laughs> clicking on your face in front of like 50 people right now. No big deal. All right, Sierra, what's next for you all with Turbine Tapper? Uh -huh. For Turbine Tapper, we hope to implement some achievements and other things and continue on with our climate research, but considering this was our first project, we're also trying to develop some more long-term stuff within our um, within our class. So I, I hope at least we can add a couple more upgrades, but I really like the simple implementation. I'm just proud of what we were able to accomplish as part of our first project. Yeah, this is really, really cool. I, there's been some comment. The illustrations are really, really cute, really spot on, and especially impressive, like our other group of students. Like, it's incredible what people can do at such a younger age. I hope that doesn't make me sound weird. Okay. Uh, anyway, how can people follow you and find out more information for what's happening next with Turbine Tapper? 
you know, I'm not sure yet, so <laughs> I'll just tell you to keep your ear to the ground to our itch.io page, and uh, we'll let you know if we have any updates. Oh, I forgot. I didn't even get any biofuel centers. Did you have a favorite one of these that you implemented? Of the different uh, level I ups? really, I like the windmills, honestly. I think the, like, the sounds associated with them are really cute. But I love the idea of the changeable clickers and some sort of incentive to keep, uh, to keep clicking beyond getting the structures purchased. <laughs> I like this level of productivity I'm feeling and achievement. I've already saved 22,000 energy. <laughs> Would you say you feel energized? Oh, Sierra. <laughs> yes, the answer, I suppose. <laughs> Anything else you would like to add before <laughs> I switch gears? No, no, I'm all good. Thank you're you're you. good on that? You're gonna leave it on that pun and just peace out? <laughs> yeah, mic drop. Alright, I'll accept it. Well, that was super fun. <laughs> Alrighty, let's close out of Turbine Tapper and we'll come up with our next honorable mention. Thank you again, Sierra. Uh, I think that was our first energy-related pun from the awards show, so uh, I'm impressed we made it this far. All right. Our next honorable mention goes to Dremel, 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 Dremel. Climate engineers, are you there? Hello there. Hello. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, thank you. Let Glad me to be here. bring it up so we get more turbines again. <laughs> All right. Let's load it up. All right. Tell us about this game, please. All right. So, um, for this year. Uh, for climate, I thought, what kind of uh, problems do we face in climate control? And I thought of clean energy. And one of the most interesting aspects of clean energy to me is wind energy, because we can make power out of thin air. <laughs> and so I thought, well, how are we making how are we making wind turbines? And I thought, how would we design that in a video game? And so what I did was I put four different types of wind turbines into a game, and I made every part of them customizable and interchangeable. And the goal of the game is to come up with the best possible wind turbine based off of the parts you chose. All so right. you select little parts, test them out, and then at the end, I'll give you a little paragraph telling you how well it was. All right, let's check it out. I love how fluffy everything looks. <laughs> hey, you. The city of Metro City has a problem, and it's up to you to fix it. We need your civil engineering skill to design a clean energy solution for our infrastructure. Your task is to design the perfect wind turbine. I believe I'm going to accept this channel. Oh, I press space. <laughs> and I just, like, <laughs> lower on the page. <laughs> Sorry. I love the typography. I like all of this. All righty. So we're going to select motor. And we're going to pick full generator. And once we found a nice combination, we get to test it. Yep. Do you have a favorite combination? Uh, my favorite combination is full generator, shielded blades, and hoisted base. I think it looks the coolest. All right. What happens when we test it? Oh. oh. Like, oh. How well does your design perform? OK. We have generated, tell me how to interpret the testing panel. Um, all right, so go ahead and click choose this design. It'll give you a bit of information on each one. Oh, my energy output was nominal. <laughs> that's, that's good. <laughs> You've led me astray. <laughs> Is your, well, you what's your name? Really good eco-friendliness. Um, I'm Austin. I've done the past two. I'm Brazil online. Uh, okay. I have done the past two jams. This one was really fun because I got to have a little bit more time to mess around with this idea of clean energy. All right. I can't believe you led me. <laughs> Let's try this again. So okay, okay. were you on a team? Um, I was alone. I do most of these solo. Okay. All right. Just so yeah. you said that you this is your second climate jam? This is or? my second entry. Yep. This is, my, this is my second jam. I didn't do the first one. I wasn't around. I did last year's one. Though. Gotcha. The, um, Jamming the curve. That was fun. Huh. What is future base? Let's test it. 
I was just a futurist. A little true man. That looked cool. <laughs> All right. So I think it's, uh, I think you've already talked a little bit about what inspired you. What's something that you took away from this climate jam? Uh, so I think the mentors were, were really useful because a lot of the questions I had were not things I could just easily Google, things related to the science behind wind turbines. So just asking those in the chat, I was able to learn a lot about the science and the different types of wind turbines. Um, I also learned that we have these absolutely ginormous offshore wind farms that I had no idea about before. And when I brought that up with my friends that we have these massive offshore wind farms being built, they were like, what? That's futuristic. There's no way. So I was really impressed by the level of clean energy solutions we've come to at this year. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot that's going on in real time with offshore uh, wind development. And personally, Absolutely. I'm thoroughly addicted to Civ 6 and the, <laughs> the climate expansion. And that is really? my end goal. Have you played it before? That's like, fun. There... I haven't. I've only played Civ 5. Oh, Civ 6 has an entire expansion to, dedicated to how civilizations handle climate change. And one of the best. I'm so glad they added that. Yeah. Oh, I'm super addicted. That's so cool. Like, it's a real problem. Uh, I shouldn't be talking about that. <laughs> but they have... <laughs> it's okay. I'll, I'll try it out. They have lots of wind turbines in the game. That's one of the best, most renewable sources. So I just, you're making me think of Civ and sorry. <laughs> I'll try it. I'll try it. Yeah. So what's next for you with this game? And for the record, um, I'm going to go extremely high. So yeah, sorry. I'm doing well this time. <laughs> um, you are doing pretty good. I'm going to go and I'm going to put in the sound I always wanted to put in. I've got a nice track um, and maybe clean up a little bit the animation. Call it a day. How can people find out more information? Well, um, I do have an itch.io page, which I see the Seattle Indies account going to put in chat. Um, that's my only social. <laughs> but I do have a couple other things there if you want to check it out. Awesome. Have you? Uh, thank you. Oh, I want to ask you really quick. Like, have you seen wind oh, yeah. turbines in person? I, I have, actually. I, I do live in the Bay Area, so it's, every time I go out to the country, I get to see it a little bit. Okay. Um, there's not many out here, but they are there, and they're absolutely towering. They're very tall. Well, that's really, really one cool. day, I would like to see a wind farm, like an offshore wind farm. Yeah. Is there anything you want to add before you bounce out? Um, I think that's about it. Uh, <laughs> thank you for having me. Yeah, congratulations. Yeah. All righty. Now, up for our next, our next one. This award is our Powered Up Award. So this one goes to, drum roll, drum roll, drum roll, drum roll, drum roll, Green Tycoon Simulator. Ryan, are you there? Ryan. Hello. Hey, congrats. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Tell us about uh, your game. Oh. Oh, oh my, there's multiple, uh, <laughs> there's a delay with the, 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 the Twitch, uh, are you on the discord? Yeah. All right. Let me see if I can figure out how to, uh, it's all good. I'm gonna... Well, you mess around with that. I'm going to try loading up the game. Uh, all right. And I just downloaded it right beforehand. So hopefully we should be oh, good. Oh. Uh, you can just play the browser version. Okay. The browser version is the browser version's better. Okay. Alrighty. So you can click the browser. There's a link on the top browser version. And then Tell us about it. All right, so maybe I should mute. I, I, I figured out how to mute myself on uh, Discord. Is there a way to do that? Mm -hmm. In the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see a way to mute. But if you I mute guess, on... I guess... You know what? I'm just going to... I'm going to mute uh, Twitch. I think that's yeah. the issue. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, so, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, this is kind of like a... Like a... You know, like a strategy game. Kind of like... Uh, speaking of Civ, by the way, I love that game. <laughs> Uh, it's great. Um, so this is, uh, like, um, yeah, you're building, uh, generating systems across the U S, uh, the, in an interconnected grid and you're trying to, uh, power the U S using renewable energy and you're a company 
And uh, so like, the objective of this game is to, uh, I guess, teach about the uh, pros and cons and, uh, I guess, uh, uh, synergies between various, like, sustainable energy sources. Okay, so let's see. Your final score is deaths prevented from global warming. We've got the build menu. Once a building's placed, I'm gonna, I'm skimming. <laughs> this is a lot. <laughs> so please correct me. All right, time to save some lives and make some money. Mm -hmm. How do you recommend we start? Well, you can, yeah, we can look at the different energy sources and what is your favorite. So the map is uh, interesting because it's a real map of the US based on uh, solar and wind capacity factors. So you can, uh, you want to place the respective like turbine or solar farm in where like the purple area is, because uh, that's the highest, the purple or the red areas for the various uh, ones. So, like solar is great in like, you know, uh, like, uh, like, yeah, Mexico or California, and then wind is great in, you know, the Midwest. And so, uh, yeah, once you placed it, uh, you can hit add power capacity and you can hit that button. Uh, it's uh, there's a little pop up. This is add power capacity, and then uh, the uh, on the bottom left, there's a pop up. Ah, uh, I see. And then, uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So then you will be generating power. So you have to uh, maintain a stable uh, power supply. Uh, so the issue of solar is that uh, it it doesn't power at night. So you can build either batteries or hydrogen storage to uh to to basically store the energy at night uh if you click on the graph button on uh graph overlays uh on a map uh, is in the center of the screen bottom of it yep and so you can see your power output and you can talk and you can uh, filter between various energy sources so you, you can notice that uh solar uh you can see the sun uh, showing, uh, yep, so the so solar is producing a lot of power, but then as it comes nighttime, it stops producing. So if you click uh, batteries on the right uh, under storage and click add, you can uh, you can add a uh, battery storage so that, uh, yeah, so it will now you have a stable entry source and you can see that in uh, y uh, white on the graph. And uh, so yeah, it has suggested storage. So probably click add capacity one more time for batteries. And then there's also hydrogen. So uh, interesting thing I learned in this is that uh, yeah, you can use even though hydrogen is only thirty seven percent efficient, you, it's good for long duration storage because it's it's cheaper to. Uh, to cold storage, even though it's more expensive to make power, you, you can, you know, store it in underground caverns and stuff. This is incredible. I love Thanks. it. I love that you're then, using real data. Yeah, and all there's a uh, citations uh, credits uh, and it, all of this is uh, taken from various uh, research papers and industry data. And uh, there's, uh, yeah. <laughs> of, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is way cooler without <laughs> without just the block attack this is incredible no wonder you also like civ i got it <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah i'm also doing my uh, masters and working at the same time so i also lost sleep over this <laughs> no big deal what are you getting your masters in uh computer science wow you have a lot going and, on yeah. Yeah, and I'm, uh, I'm taking a, 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 I'm gonna take a break for summer, uh, enjoy myself a little bit. I'm gonna make another game and also work on, on polishing this one. I was about to say, so what's uh, next for this game? So, yeah, I actually, uh, yeah, it just implemented, uh, after the game jam, the, uh, hydrogen, uh, storage. And then I, I'm also thinking about adding, uh, like, a uh, supply demand curves and more, like, global warming mechanics. So this is like taking kind of like a pretty optimistic approach instead of like how many lives have been lost to climate change, this is life saved. Mm -hmm. So like, uh, 
So if you click uh, uh, fast forward on the uh, bottom, uh, there's there's warp. So you're you're doing one hour per second. So then if you go faster, you can do that. And then the strobing up the sunlight gets yeah. uh, <laughs> it off <laughs> too. But yeah, so now you can see you you saved a hundred lives already. Uh, yeah, there's a there's a daylight overlay for the strobing effect because it, it gets annoying at faster time warps. And yeah. then, uh, so the uh, and yeah, you can see uh, you you're producing almost a gigawatt of cap of uh, power continuously, which is good. Uh, you have uh, you yeah saved a thousand <laughs> lives already. And that, that was actually pretty surprising to me, like, uh, that you would have, uh, because the life stage is taken from, uh, a thousand tons of, uh, CO2, uh, prevented is a life save, so that's where that's based on. I love this dramatic music, too. And it's a very serious business that we're doing. <laughs> this is incredible. I can't believe you're doing this on top of your masters, too. Uh, ugh. How can people follow this to learn more about it? Uh, I guess there's the itch uh, page. Uh, I guess I, I haven't. I, I wrote a short devlog uh, for the patch, but I don't really have like any, I guess, details about it. Maybe I could add that to the itch page. But yeah, I this guess is... I could also. It's incredible. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks so much. It means a lot. I was, uh, yeah, I was very surprised to, to learn that I got an award. Yeah, you got the Powered Up Award. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Anything else you want to add? Uh, I guess uh, I also learned that like a uh, high voltage DC is actually relatively cheap to, to power the entire United States. And that would, uh, I guess, put a lot of like... Uh, it would also, you know, solve a lot of like intermittency issues with like wind and stuff. And mm. you could, uh, uh, there's, oh yeah, that's also something else I implemented. The, the wind turbines have like a stochastic, uh, like a random function. So you have to build multiple new storage to, to smooth out the curve. I'm just going to play my room. Whee! All right. I'm sorry. That's not helpful. All right. This is really cool. <laughs> Thank you again, and congratulations on the Powered Up Award for Green Tycoon Simulator. Thank you. Oh. I was, it was Go ahead. Awesome. Awesome talking with you. Yeah. Thank you. Alrighty, guys. We are up on our last award in this award show. We've got our grand jury's choice. Are you all ready for this? So... We are, <laughs> I am excited to introduce you guys to We Newables. Congratulations. Thank you. Do I call you Swirly Man? No, you can call me Joe from We Newables Corporate. That's good. Yeah, um, I think best would probably be to run the trailer again. We have an excellent trailer that was done in-house by one of our excellent video developers. All right. And I can kind of give you a good recap on what Renewables is all about and what we're all about at the Renewables Corporation. <laughs> Shout out to our voice actor, Scott. Hi there. My name is John New, owner and CEO of Renewables. I'll tell you more about that soon, but for now, welcome to your city. As you can see, there's not much here yet, but with your help, we'll turn all this open land into a thriving society with happy citizens. Let's introduce you to your new workplace. We Newables, your one-stop shop for all things power and building. Here at Renewables, we offer an array of power, food, production, and entertainment buildings to help jumpstart your generations for success. But be warned, some buildings produce pollution, which will negatively affect the happiness of your citizens and the productivity of your buildings. Yeah. 
But worry not. If you keep a watchful eye on your pollution output and upgrade your services to renewable resources, we know you'll make the right choices for a promising future. We Newables, all of this today for a better tomorrow. That was, all right, that, that was is, slick. That is We Newables. It's uh, basically a, a, a tower defense game in its most um, most general form, but it's it's a little bit more than that, right? It's a it's a city building simulation to. You know, this is our chance to build the world how we want to build it. I think that a lot of us kind of inherited this earth as we were born, and this is our chance to really make it how we want to make it and let people decide for themselves. All right. What inspired you? Cl clean energy, <laughs> first and foremost. <laughs> Absolutely clean energy. Um, you know, that was one of the main things that was the jam, and that was one of the main things that we kind of wanted to get to. And it's it was really great being able to work on a team of people that that were able to come together with a nice singular vision and just make it happen. Yeah, I see you going through the tutorial right now. That's good. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm having That's a great okay. time you're doing, doing it. <laughs> you're, you're doing excellent so far. <laughs> Please. So have you all done game jams together before? Um. No, uh, we've all done. I think we've all done game jams independently. I've worked with two of the people. I worked with our create the creative director and our sound sound our main sound designer on the game. And everyone else it was a nice new experience meeting people and getting to know them. Uh, fun fact is we actually didn't even have an artist for this game, and our, our writer really kind of stepped up. Our writer and producer both stepped up. All of the towers and units were were created by our writer, literally learning pixel art that that week and figuring out. And our producer did um, our environment tile set. So it was really cool working together. You have to place the towers all within the power structure. So you see the little blue grid from the, the solar panel. You got to plop it in there. Let me zoom out to see that. So it needs to go in the blue. Yeah, not in the water, but in the... Oh, in the, oh, 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 oh. I don't oh. know if you see where you place yeah. the solar panel. Yeah, yeah twitch, I, twitched away. Sh I got it. I'm just... <laughs> So many new games in a row. Thank you for your patience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're, doing, you're doing excellent. <laughs> Did any Pretty other fun. tower defense games inspire you guys? Uh, yeah, definitely. We're, we're heavily inspired by the, the old school, probably the old school Warcraft three tower defense mods and Starcraft tower defense mods. And actually, in in our game design, one of the one of the original ideologies was: what if we had a game that was like Starcraft and you placed pylons for power and then you could use those pylon power pylon power type structures to power all your little little turrets that can make you make all the citizens happy and, and fulfill all of your all of your population i got everybody they're all so happy you did it you've completed the tutorial <laughs> now the real game starts did you guys lose a lot of sleep I mean, I want to say yes, but no. <laughs> I mean, um, <laughs> it was it was nice. It was super nice. We had seven, we had like over a week to make it. I'm I'm used to doing like Ludum Dares, right? Like a 24 hour game mm. jams where it's just we work for 40 hours straight. So this was awesome. I mean, this we I could sleep. We were able to make a tutorial. We were able to add in a lot of little little things. We were able to add in a lot of like um, we added in just just a lot of little fun little stuff. And I feel like because we were allotted all that extra time it really let us get get quite a bit more creative with 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 what we wanted to build i think i have done a poor job here uh <laughs> yeah you should you should you should probably sell one of those solar towers and maybe place a bee farm in its place okay you only you only got you only got one one size spots um there's definitely a learning curve to the game um it's one of those things that i feel you kind of need to play once or twice yeah it also has and 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 yeah, bee farms are great. Hashtag hashtag bee gang. Um, one of the things that we've realized is it has an incredibly steep learning, or incredibly steep difficulty curve. So once you get to about generation eight, which will be wave twenty eight, I believe the units have about fifteen hundred happiness, and there's just there's like a hundred of them. So it takes it's it's really difficult to get past that point. So so it's definitely. <laughs> 
definitely has a hard cap. Got it. But not an not an impossible cap. Okay. Oh, uh, what's something that you all learned as a result of this game jam? Oh, geez, so much. I would say primarily that clean energy is complex. I mean, there's no. It's actually much like a video game, right? And there's no one single right answer that's going to solve all of the issues, right? There's many, many different factors that can go into it, and there's many different solutions that you can employ to, to, to have the best and most effective strategy. You know, renewables specifically, we wanted to really heavily focus on proper planning and really thinking ahead before you build and reusing things that you build to, to affect the different parts of your city. You know, we knew building fossil fuels would be easier, but had major negative impacts. You'd say and we knew we knew, And we knew that clean energy is better for us and the earth in the long term. And we knew all of this today for a better tomorrow. Sorry, I'm being super <laughs> cheesy. <laughs> That's all right. Whatever you have to do to save the earth, it's all good. Exactly. Exactly. We're all here. We're all here just trying to live our best lives. What's next to make for as the many game? Happy people as possible. Next for the game is the biggest thing that we want to do is there's quite a few bugs as you get when you make a game jam game. And I think a leaderboard will probably be pretty cool. Those are probably the two main fac facets that will that will update within the next week or so and, and probably just include that. I think that that's that's one thing that the majority of the people have the majority of the people who have really kind of pushed themselves into getting far in this game have asked for is some form of leaderboard or some way to compete against other people to see how far other people are making so something along those lines i think it'd be really neat to add something to where you have a leaderboard but on top of that you can also sort of see maybe on a really high level the build that the people took in order to get that like you know they had 60 percent b farms or they had 90 percent arcades or w whatever it ends up being but having some form of metrics to see what people are finding to being the most the most effective build and build strategies in the game i'm just going all in on b farms man <laughs> Hashtag B gang, yeah. welcome. <laughs> Thank You've you. made it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel honored. How can people follow this to learn more as you develop it? Yeah, we just the itch page. You know, go to the itch page, go play the game. It's all WebGL. It, it's super small, very minimal assets. I think the entire game is only is only like like eight megabytes 11 megabytes it's incredibly tiny game so it should it should be great yeah it, it kind of works on mobile it works better on on desktop but mobile you can play it so just play it check it out go to the itch page and uh, we'll be getting some updates in the future minor updates probably not gonna do anything too crazy i'm sure this game will always and forever remain as just a free fun game for people to come by and just just play and check out and hopefully learn a little bit there's you can click on the towers if you click on that hydro dam that you just placed there in the water you can click on it and there will be a little tutorial or a little tool tip will pop up and give you detailed information about specifically to hydropower and all the towers have these tool tips but not all of them are completely filled <laughs> out again to sort of do the time so that was that was one of the cool things that we'll probably continue expanding on and again just sort of helping people understand that there's so many different choices and so many different opportunities and options for people to use for clean energy and it's not and there's not just one answer it's 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 a multitude and really the the power is endless there final pun <laughs> all right do you have anything else you want to add oh my gosh uh, just, there's a lot again, more just, people <laughs> yeah, oh well you're only on wave two or you're on you're on wave, sorry wave five <laughs> it'll get crazy you get to about 100 100 units per wave it gets, not it, gets, it gets it gets it gets pretty wild um yeah i just want to say just just big shout out to the, to the team it was awesome getting to meet and work with the people um everybody did a fantastic job seriously the entire team did did absolutely phenomenal everybody really stepped up and it was just a blast it was such a great blast getting to work with everybody and hopefully in the future we are going to continue to keep making awesome games that was super super cool all right and there's music i just uh it was going to be a little too loud competing with the discord all right there yeah. we have it congratulations to everybody today on the climate game jam again this climate game jam was held by indicade and games for our future it was last month around earth day 
Congrats to Summer and Surya for an honorable mention. Populous for honorable mention. Planet for Niantic, Niantic's Positive Impact Award. We had Arcology Dreams get another honorable mention. Do Something for Earth Care got another honorable mention. Then we had Low Tech Orama as the most adventurous game from the Game Jam. Turbine Tapper got another honorable mention. Climate Engineers got another honorable mention. And then we had Green Tycoon Simulator got the Powered Up Award. And we, Newables, who we just saw, got the Grand Jury's Choice Award. All of this information will be available for everyone to check out afterwards once the stream is done. Huge congrats 